Hi everybody, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. I just finished this watercolor painting of Lacey, my chicken. If you'd like to see how I did it, keep on watching. Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. My name's Chris, and in this short video tutorial, I'm going to paint this picture of one of my chickens. This is Lacey the chicken, and she uh, is one of my favorite chickens. And I love her, the color uh, of her feathers, the black and white texture, the red in her head and all. And so I decided to paint her. So uh, I'm gonna show us how I do, uh, how I do that. Uh, first of all, I have already sketched an outline, a line drawing of it, maybe it might be a little hard to see um, in, in this, uh, but uh, I uh, sketched it on there with just regular graphite pencil and I've used a little bit of white ma or masking fluid, Windsor Newton masking fluid uh, in here to retain the highlights in a couple places. I don't always use the masking fluid, in fact I don't use it that often, but I thought I would today just uh, just to experiment with it a bit more. And so I retained a highlight in the eye, behind the eye a little bit, and on the beak here in a couple spots, just a few places. And uh, I'll leave a link to my Windsor Newton uh, masking fluid in the description below. So as I'm looking at this, um, I think I'm gonna start with the feather areas. Um, and um, again, looking here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, uh, get rid of that glare, I'm gonna start uh, you know, the feathers, uh, and obviously it's a black and white mixture, so, uh, but there's a lot of blue in this white, and of course the light is coming from over here, so the lightest area is on the right, darker on the left. I'm going to accentuate that so I get a sense of the shape of the chicken um, by really darkening over here on the, the left, um, and uh, all of that. Obviously the point of interest is her eye. And so I'll really emphasize that. And of course, that'll be easy to do because of the red there that will really direct your attention. And uh, as far as the background, I don't really know if I'll do much, just a really a grayish color um, and, uh, not, and, and uh, just try to keep all the attention on the chicken, okay? And uh, so again, you always start with your lightest colors and watercolor. So I'm gonna get my real light, light blue. Um, maybe a cerulean blue in this case, I'm not really sure, and, um, and just do a, a wash over much of this area of the feathers. I think I'll do the background after I do the chicken a little later. I like to keep my reference images like you just saw on a tablet uh, near me there. Um, I, I kind of like to do that versus printing off the reference or something because I can actually get uh, a real vibrant colors um, when I, uh, when I keep it on a, a tablet digital version of it like that. Okay. Uh, I'm using my Oku uh, number six quill brushes. I'll leave a description, uh, leave a link in the description below for these as well. I love these brushes. These are my, uh, I just got them recently and these quills are great. It's a real squirrel hair. And so it just holds water like crazy. All right, so here we go. Uh, again, I, I, I'm just gonna, most of the areas of the feather are all gonna get this cerulean blue start with here because um, that's the lightest color in the feathers and uh, I can come back later with um, the, with the black detail over that without any problem. Just don't really wanna get the blue in the areas that are red at this point. Um, these Oku brushes as well have a lovely tip. See, even though this is a really large brush, see how, how fine that tip is? And I can come in there with this right around these areas um, without a problem. Now you might not think of the chicken as blue at all. You might look at this and go, why is she painting blue? Well, 
Again, it's, it's the art of painting white, and a lot of that chicken is white, and white has a lot of blue in it, and in order to, uh, yeah. So you will see later as we progress along how that will actually look real white once I bring in the high contrast dark black feathers up against it. Um, and also this will dry much lighter than what you see right now um, because watercolor always does. So there we go, I've got that. I want to introduce some other colors here. There's areas again on the left side of the chicken where even the white feathers are darker just because they're in the shadow. I'm taking some of my indigo, which is a favorite color of mine with stain quill brush. And this is still quite wet, so I'm able to come in and um, and drop in or brush in some of this contrasty color kind of going um, in the direction I see these feathers because that will help. And I'm only doing it really in the areas where it's darker again in the shadow of this, the, the left side. The uh, light is coming from the right, upper right corner. Um, this is actually the tail or butt, I don't know if you call it a butt, but the, of the chicken back here. And I need to create a nice contrast between the top of the head and these feathers on the back. So I might even darken them a bit more than what's in the um, painting um, or in the reference because I want to create a strong line of contrast right there. Um, so separate. Otherwise, it'll get a little confusing, like where does the head end? And, um, and so, yeah. This picture will be provided uh, as a link in the description below, so the reference image, so that you can um, uh, go ahead and download it and use it for your own painting. All right, so I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush. I'm going to come in and choose my red. I'm thinking hmm at this point in the process I will often look at my color wheel these are the colors on my palette and really try to decide which color I really want to use for the for the um, comb, I, call, I think they call it, um, the, the red stuff around the face, the chicken. Um, this is not a rooster. I don't know what the parts are. Anyways, this, this is not a chicken anatomy lesson, so we won't worry about it. But I'm kind of thinking this quinacridone rose is actually really good because there's a pinkiness to it, and it's not really a true red. And so I think I'm going to use this quinacridone rose by Daniel Smith. It's a PV19, which is actually a violet pigment. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And that's having something like this where you've swatched out all your colors uh, is super helpful. Now I'm coming in with this. And again, I'm going to just go over this area that uh, consists of the comb or whatever you call it. Now, I am bringing this wet of this red area up against the edge of some areas that are already blue. And you're seeing it's, it's charging in. And, and I'm not that worried about that. Now, that, that's kind of messing up my, the edge between the comb and the back part of the chicken, which, um, but I, I knew that was going to happen before I even started. Um, I like to work wet on wet and just continue going in with these areas. If I'm really concerned and don't want an area to bleed over into the other, I just won't paint up right next to it. I'll leave a little bit of white gap in between, uh, maybe come back later, paint that area. But I'm, Sometimes I like, I like to paint a more loose style and that, um, that process whereby the paints kind of blend into each other is actually part of the mystery and beauty of watercolor. And so I don't want to always avoid that. Rather, I want to uh, exploit, so to speak, the power of watercolor and not try to just, uh, do a perfect rendition maybe of the edges and that kind of thing, but let the watercolor uh, flow and mingle and um, that kind of thing. And so 
Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. And this again, this is my first wash. And uh, in my first wash, I typically want to uh, get all areas of the painting um, with, wa with, with, uh, with a wash, with some amount of wash on it. And um, in order to do that without letting them dry in between, you're going to get areas that touch like that. But again, this is the first light wash. And as we go along, it will, I will go over these areas again. Now I'm looking at some areas here that are darker and I'm dropping in more concentrated application of this, this color. And uh, you can see and it's the same color, quinacridone magenta by Daniel Smith, but I'm, I'm just dropping it in along the edges there where I want to darken. And it's charging out. It's darker underneath here. There you go. Okay. Now the uh, main area that's left uh, is uh, the eye and the beak. And when I look at those, I see uh, actually uh, there's a lot of yellow, both in the eye and in the beak. And this is turning out just lovely because I'm getting my primary colors, aren't I? I'm getting yellow, blue, and uh, red. And so I'm using, I'm thinking as I look at those colors, it's, it's kind of a goldy, especially the eye, kind of a goldy yellow. And so I'm grabbing my nickel quinacridone gold, but that's an M. Graham color. And um, that is a PO48 PY150. Now here, the top here is a little darker. So I'm gonna put down a dark application there. Then I'm gonna get my brush wet and clean, just water, and take that and pull that color so it's lighter as it goes across the beak to the other side here. Okay. And then same idea, I think I'm gonna come back with some now darker application of that and put it on that one side, just dropping it in there on the left-hand side of the beak. And um, I'm gonna take this quinacridone gold and drop it in here. It's bleeding into that red, that's nice. The things in nature don't occur with just really hard edges between them. There's a lot of blurring of one color into the other, and that's why you want to let watercolor do some of that blending for you um, and not fight it because it makes it look very organic, natural. Hmm. I'm taking some of this uh, nickel quinacridone um, gold again, and I'm dropping it into a few other places that I see kind of a orangey or cast to some of these areas of the comb. Uh, if you're a chicken aficionado and I'm, not, and I'm not calling it the right thing and that's not really a comb on a chicken, a hen, then you can let me know in the, in the comments below. That would be super awesome. I have chickens, but I'm honestly not a chicken expert by any means. I know how to keep them alive. And that's uh, that's good. I feed them, and, I, and then they give me their eggs. So it's a really nice little arrangement we have. All right, I like it. I'm pausing and just going to take a look at this for a second and possibly let it dry. Actually, before I let it dry, I think I'm going to come in and just do this eye. It's a really it's a gold. And I actually have a little bit of um, masking fluid there in the center of the eye right there. And so it's, I'm painting around it. And of course, masking fluid will, um, when I take it off, there'll be a white dot there, which will be the glint of the eye. Um, actually, I painted around the whole area of the eye here, and then I'm, once I 
come back later, I'm going to paint a really dark spot there. Actually, I may just do it right now. I'm going to use my indigo again, which is almost a black. Yeah, I just barely touched it and it just flowed out into the rest of the colors there. And I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that right now. I may come back to it later and tidy it up a bit more. Um, but I'm going to let that dry right now as my first wash. Okay, the painting, the first wash has uh, dried and now I focused in, um, I'll zoomed in a little bit on just the face of the chicken. And you can see I've also removed the uh, masking fluid. I placed the masking fluid here, a couple places on the beak, place right behind the eye, and a little bit up here on the tail feathers. And again, these were areas that when I looked at the image and I squinted at the reference image, I just saw some bright white areas, really bright, bright white, little specks there, and again here. And I wanted to retain them. But um, the masking fluid is a little bit yellow colored, and also you paint over it so you kind of lose, you know, it changes color, and so you're not quite sure where it is. And I wanted to really see those white areas before I went any further. So I went ahead and removed it now. Now, of course, from now on, I have to be careful about those areas and not painting over them. All right, let's get back into this now. I'm wanting to take my indigo, which uh, Daniel Smith color. Indigo is a combination of PB60 and PB, PBK6. So it's a blue and a black pigment combined. And it really looks black uh, on its own, but there's a bluish tint to it. I love that color. It's a great color. Um, I think I'm gonna come up here into And there's this checkered pattern to the feathers. And um, I'm gonna be using my number one Oku and a pretty heavy concentration of, uh, so it's, it's quite a bit smaller than what I was using before. And um, Um, dropping some on there, coming back with a wet brush, kind of softening out some edges so that I don't get too many um, abrupt edges. Again, letting watercolor do some of the work for me. And um, need to paint negative paint around this comb and around this black back edge of its head. Again, I'm trying to create contrast. Um, your eye is always drawn to the places of greatest contrast, and so you really want to be aware of where that is best thing to do is to stand back and squint, looking at your subject. There's a lot of, um, kind of a combination of rough or, or, or sharp edges combined with some um, really soft edges. So I'll put down a little paint and that paint uh, wet on dry will kind of create a hard edge, but then again, I come back with my brush, having um, gotten a lot more water and less pigment, and just soften those edges, soften those edges. And it's somewhat of a repetitive process, so I think I might just be quiet for a while and do this, and you can kind of watch. I'm gonna speed up, probably will speed up the video in editing, so you don't have to watch every little dab of paint. Um, in this process, and if I start doing something different, I'll slow her down and talk about it a bit.
what I've been doing in here, obviously putting this pattern of the feathers and and it's just a kind of an abstracty kind of pattern and uh, I've kind of left it, I, I kind of like it the way it is. I think um, I'm not gonna mess with it too much more. Um, but now I'm thinking about how do I do these, these same feathers in, in the, so I, I focused on the areas that were dark. This is dark and this is dark on the side and below here is the darkest areas. Now it's still a pattern fe a feather pattern up here on this side above, at the top of the head and on the right hand side. But it's got to be much less, uh, it's got to be a lot, much less dark, lower, uh, a, a lighter value. Um, and, or else it'll just, the whole chicken will be just one mass of pattern of feathers and that's just not going to look good. And so, uh, again, value is, is more important than color and the value of this light side of the chicken has to remain light or else again, I, I'll say it again, uh, it just will become very, um, confusing to the eye. So that's what I'm trying to do now. That's what I'm thinking about at this point. And so again, I've, I've got that. Uh, this indigo, but a real light. And I might actually work a bit more in like, as, as opposed to individual feathers, I might work a bit more in just sh blocks of color here that I see. And it's dark down in here and then it gets a little lighter. There's almost a line of shadow here. So I think I'll emphasize that a bit on the top of its head, kind of a, a darker block value there. I had already started it down here before I started my narration again. Earlier I was kind of like this, again, just kind of blocks of, of shape of the gray um, as opposed to individual feathers. Um, You, when, to learn to paint, you have to see shapes and not, for example, if you're painting a chicken, not individual feathers. Okay, and again, in some areas I painted that, that kind of pattern of feathers, but um, I don't want to do that throughout and it gets a little busy. Now when we paint value, we paint it not only, it's best to paint value areas with multiple colors. So I'm going to come back with my cerulean blue which I used as a base to the chicken earlier. And I'm coming back in and in areas are, that are shaded in particular, blue is a great color for introducing shade and all of that. So I'm coming in now over these areas and applying, applying this cerulean blue. All right, I've let it dry again, and now I want to come back again uh, with some of uh, my, some other colors to kind of emphasize shape. I'm going to pick up some of my cerulean blue, very light, and I want to put in shadow, emphasize shapes over here. I'm using a bigger brush because I want to use big brush strokes here. You see how you, when you do that, see how all of a sudden shapes seem to kind of pop out. Um, create some a little bit softer edges along here. So again, brush is very clean, but lots of water and coming along here and just in some of these areas that I've just put some paint, I'm going to really soften. Again, they're feathers and so they, they're they more likely going to have, you know, where they the edge of the ch chicken has edge of those feathers is, is quite often going to be very feathery. <laughs> hey, that makes sense feathery because they're feathers. And so by taking, you know, 
might have some dark colors in here, you know, like this blue and this indigo, but then you put that down and then take a brush with a lot of water on it and come in along here and with the top, you know, just touch along here and draw that, that out. And all of a sudden you have, you know, a, kind of a sense of, of the featheriness of the edge there. And it's just so much more interesting than a hard edge. And I really like that. And that, learning how to do those type things is really at the heart of mastering watercolor. Not that I would say I have mastered watercolor, I'm not saying that, but I'm learning as I go that those little tricks and really letting watercolor be watercolor and not trying to make it into oil or acrylic or something else because it's just not, it's not gonna work that way. And um, yeah. So now I'm starting to do a little, some bold things with colors here along the edges, just in, in places that's kind of maybe my trademark. I like to do that. I like to introduce colors that you don't necessarily really see, like you don't see blues that bright in here. But I think that's again, what makes it interesting. And so I'm using some artistic license to introduce some more brilliant colors in places where I really feel like it would work well. There we go, like that. All right, now I'm looking at the, that comb there, the red part, and thinking I need to do more detail in there. So I'm gonna come back to my original what was it quinacridone rose and get a nice dark I have to add create some shape here with these they are darker obviously um, furthest from the light Now I need to soften, so water on the brush, come back in along those edges, do some magic with the softening of that, create some interesting shapes. Um, Negative painting here underneath. I need to paint uh, below the bottom of that beak and around this other red thing, kind of creating, and those shapes kind of pop out. I started with red in there, but then realized it was really quite dark under there and I needed to create that negative shape to make those uh, shapes pop out. Same thing over here. emphasizing some of the darkness in there. It's not really quite as dark as that in the reference, but again, I'm trying to create contrast. Um, and so, um, emphasizing colors that aren't quite that intense, but I do see some pinks also in these some of these white areas. You see I just put some here. I took a very light wash of the of the quinacridone rose. And because again, I don't know if it's it's the pink of the comb reflecting off the onto the white feathers and all. It's creating some of that color in there, but it is in there. I can see it. So I'm gonna paint over. 
some of these areas with a real light wash of uh, this pink. It adds a lot of interest. Adding a bit more texture here, um, but I'm doing so with more of the cerulean blue, a little less uh, use of the indigo there, just because again, I want to keep the values light on that right side of the head. Um, So I'll use a lighter, a color that has a lighter tonal value, and the the cerulean blue definitely does. thinking there's quite a bit of dark. It's almost like this is where the chicken is sitting on the ground or something. So I'm gonna paint in here, using the edge of the brush a bit. Get the brush real wet. And draw, bring this, drag this out just like that, see. And I don't know if I'm going to do much of a background but besides what I'm d doing here with just uh, pulling colors away from the bird because I think it might distract. It's really just a close-up of the bird. And, the, and I think if I do too much messing around with uh, background, um, I, I might regret it. <laughs> I'm going to put some of the cerulean blue down in here, though. I think that might be cool. Really just, you know, I guess I'm trying to do this with just four colors. Again, what those colors are, cerulean blue, indigo, and um, quinacridone rose, and uh, the yellow was the nickel quinacridone gold. Yeah, those are the only colors I've used thus far. Min minimizing or limiting, I should say, your palette. Uh, it gives your, your painting a more of a color unity uh, and not a, not a uh, yeah just by using fewer colors and learn to use them you might you have to really learn to to blend them and use them next to each other in certain ways and all um, you know the way you're blending them makes it look like you have used many more colors than that um, I guess I did use a little bit of a different red up in this uh, to kind of create a little bit more of an orangey red. But what I should have done is taken my quinacridone uh, magenta, sorry, it's quinacridone rose, I keep calling it the wrong thing, and, and just mixed in some of the yellow I was already using, which is my, this, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's the way I should have done it. <laughs> um, because uh, that way I wouldn't have introduced another color, which I did. So I think I might actually go back and those areas and, and do that again, just using these colors. And this quinacridone uh, burnt, this quinacridone, uh, nickel quinacridone gold is a really beautiful color and it really mixes with other colors really interesting in interesting ways.
All right. Now I'm again details. Uh, it's kind of I'm nearing. I think I'm nearing the end of this, anyways. Um, so I'm wanting to come into some areas where I feel like I could even get a smaller brush, I guess. But uh, here on the beak and other areas where I feel like I need to add a little, a little bit more of a detail and interest. Uh, Don't need very much, really. You always kind of you start out with really big brushes and you work your way further and further down to smaller and smaller brushes, quite typically. And you don't need details everywhere. You can just put them in a few places and it, it makes suggestion of details. Yeah, moving back to a bigger brush. You find if you're, if you're sitting there messing around with too many little tiny brush strokes, you're probably using too small of a brush and you need to move back to a bigger one and be a little bit more bold is what I feel anyways. And um, of course, it, it, it really depends, I guess, on the style. You may be a person who really loves uh, just creating very photo, like photorealistic, uh, very detailed paintings. And if that is your style, great. Then you would need to use a small brush and really get in there and, um, and tend to the details. But I don't tend to paint that way and, and don't. Um, so yeah, if that's kind of the instruction or tutorials you're looking for, you probably need to look for somebody else because I'm not going to probably show you that, um, yeah, which is okay. Everybody has a different style and thing that they like. So if you like my style, then you're probably watching my tutorials and that's great. If not, that's also fine. All right, I'm getting to that point now where I feel like I need to finish. So I'm going to sign it, and then I'm going to step away and let it be for a while. Maybe even step away for an hour, and um, and then come back, and maybe I'll see something that oh yeah, I really want to add something or do something extra somewhere. But I don't. I I need to always, and I encourage you to do this to step away from your paintings. Um, even even during the middle of the painting process, when it's, for example, when you're waiting for things to dry, um, you uh, it gives you a perspective um, and uh, lets you see with fresh eyes. I'm actually going to let this dry before I do my signature because it's a little too wet down here. So let's let it dry and step away. Okay, I've decided I'm done. I've added my signature here. I wanted to put, uh, create a little less um, emphasis on the tail feathers in the back, so I took my big quill brush here, got full of a lot of water, and just kind of dragged it across that. You can see it's created this kind of, it's, it's just really softened it all up in here, and I think it uh, attracts a little less attention. really wanted the eye to go here. So there's more detail, there's more sharp lines, there's more contrast there. Uh, so I think your eye goes there. So I'm done with this. If you enjoyed this, uh, could you let me know? Uh, I'd love to have comments below. If there's anything I've done here that you have questions about, I uh, welcome your questions. I'd happy to try to answer them. Uh, I am a teacher uh, and I love to teach watercolor. So, um, so I'd love to get your questions if you have them. So please add them in the comments below. And uh, if you have other types of tutorials you'd love to see, I'd, I'd love to get your suggestions for that as well. Just put it in the comments below. And I'm glad you took some time out with me today to paint this uh, chicken. Her name is Lacey. And um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Hope you have a great day. See you next time.